So we are always working with different agencies and making sure that all projects on every agency is running as smoothly as possible. And this takes a really strong time management and somebody who knows how to do that really well. So in this episode, we're going to talk about how good we are at time management. And also you're going to get to learn a little bit about what we do internally with Dot Discovers, which is a monthly high value piece that we give all of our client account managers. So not only learning about time management and how we sort of navigate that in between agencies, but also give you a little insight about how we run things here at Dot & Company internally with our Dot Discovers. So have a listen and enjoy. Welcome to the Happy Clients Podcast, brought to you by Dot & Company. Whether you're a virtual assistant, an agency owner, or a client-facing account manager, we all deal with clients. Lucky for you, client management is what we do best. Now, let's dig in, chat cam life, and have some fun along the way. Cheers to happy clients. So we're talking about time management today. So uh, Alana and I are just going to go through um, a couple slides with you guys. And at the end of each slide, we'll just pause for some questions just to kind of wrap things up slide by slide. Um, but we'll talk about just time management in general. We'll talk about time tracking and toggle, which I know you guys are all doing. Um, organization bound with both the agency and the client. And then some of our favorite tools, tricks, and tips. Yeah, so I will start with just a kind of a brief rundown on time management. Um, so Jenna and I, I believe both work with three agencies, right, Jenna? Uh, currently, I'm offboarding one this week. Okay. But it will be down so, to two. But yes, three. <laughs> Yeah, so we have to do a lot of time management. And I think we both kind of agree that the biggest thing about time management is you need to know what works for you and it's different for everyone. So Jenna takes notes on a notepad and I have a little notepad um, on my screen. And so the biggest thing is just really knowing what works for you and how you manage time best. But some of the tips that we have are listed here. So time blocking is so important to us. I always time block when I have a decent sized project I need to work on, or if there, I just really need to focus some time on project management in this agency, I block off my whole afternoon. No one can schedule in. I can show on my calendar that I'm busy. And I know too, that that time is going to be used to do X, Y, Z. Another tip that's really helpful is to delegate because I know as Cam, we love to do everything ourselves and it's so easy to just oh, this needs a copy edit, I can fix that spelling mistake and just hop in. But there's team members who are there to do those things. So using people who are there to help you is so important. And then you can use your time to focus on bigger things. I am such a fan of keeping meetings hard stop as the norm. Many of my clients know, like, if I set a meeting for 30 minutes, at 30 minutes, I'm going to wrap it up. And if we need more time, we can schedule in again but it really helps to keep expectations with clients in check that they can't just sit on the call with you for hours or whatever. Um, and of course, if things need more time, then I'm willing to do that. But if it's not going to be productive, then it's not a good use of your time. Another really key thing is understanding what's necessary for each client, because some clients really do need weekly meetings and some don't need anything but quarterly meetings. So there's no point in meeting weekly with clients that don't need that much attention because it's not using anyone's time well. And it's also knowing what's necessary for each client in the fact of like, I have one client who she's so busy, she's notoriously bad for giving us approval. So we meet once a week for 15 minutes and then that is her time each week to review what we have for her. And it's really quick, it's really efficient and then it keeps us, our flows moving really well. And also it's important to save everybody time if there's nothing on the agenda. So if you can do, what you're going to cover in the meeting in an email. Sometimes I like to offer to clients like, hey, uh, I don't have a ton of things to go over. This is my bullet points for today's meeting. We can totally still meet, but if you would rather take your time to do some other things, like just let me know. And clients are really appreciative of that because then they have more time in their day too. Another great tip for time management is just knowing your schedule really well. So for example, I know my Tuesdays are just chaos with agency A. Just the way it works. I have sent tons of meetings, stuff from Monday flows over. Um, so agency B and C are aware that I don't really do meetings with them on Tuesdays, but I am responsive. So it's just all about knowing your schedule and knowing 
how you're going to manage that. And that also goes with time walking to them. And then one thing that's really important for me, because I love to be really structured. I think that with time management, there's definitely a benefit of having a balance of flexible versus structured because you can totally structure your day. But as, if there's a fire you need to go put out, you have to be a little bit flexible and you have to be able to jump around as long as you don't have meetings or stuff like that. Um, and all of that to say, Jenna and I have a favorite time management tool that helps us keep all of these things in order. So <laughs> yes, um, before we talk about toggle, one thing I just wanted to say about um, the meeting agenda is like, yeah, Lana sends hers, you know, like often, um, but also if the meeting doesn't need to happen, sending that agenda as well, I guess the notes as well. But one tool that I do, and I know, you know, most of you, if not all of you do this is um, sending the meeting agenda in advance of the meeting so that clients can stay on track. Because when you open up a meeting, sometimes like if they don't know what the agenda is, then they're going to like come with all of their topics and things that they want to discuss and you quickly lose, you know, control of the meeting. So sending that um, agenda in advance really does help make sure that everyone stays on track. Um, but with mm -hmm. that said, um, so <laughs> Toggle is my absolute best friend. And I know Katie has an SOP that I think maybe we should send around again, just so that it's on the top of everyone's vision. Um, so best practices, just kind of high level from Katie's SOP. So download the desktop app, make sure that you have that either on your laptop or on your desktop, like depending on what you're doing and make sure that you're tracking time. If the desktop app is not something that works well for you, the the browser is also fine. Like you can do that as well. Um, so like Alana had said, like do what's best for you and what works because we don't want to add all of these additional tools and, and practices if it's not going to work in the way that you work best. Um, so desktop app or browser uh, works fine. Toggle has a phone app too that I use. Um, yes, for iPhone, yes. which is great. Yeah, I have an Android and I don't think they have one, but oh. <laughs> I open it up in a browser anyway. <laughs> so it's <laughs> fine on my phone too. <laughs> so you can do that as well if you're not an Apple user. But if anyone is an Android user and you know if there is an app for Toggle, like immediately just let me know so I don't have to go searching for it because I would love to have that. <laughs> See, we're learning so many things here. Um, so yes, get in the habit of tracking every little thing because you want to make sure that if you're asked a question, and this might be an HR background that I have, like a, that I love to track everything and have a record and just know like what was done on what day, how much time it takes me to do each thing, because we'll get to this in a minute, but it's so important to know how long it takes you to do things so that you can plan out your days and your weeks. So it's really important. Also for toggle, these are just the by agency and task, like template kind of tasks that you can track in toggle that are in Katie's SOP. Those are just like some examples, but for me, I have an agency that likes to see my hours and like what I'm doing by client. So I do everything by client. So for example, like we had the top two that have client name. All of mine have client name because my agency wants to know like how much time is each client taking for internal meetings and for external meetings? Like how much project management are you doing for this client? Just so that if they need to switch around clients by team lead, then they can easily do that and see how long it's taking. Um, so that's always important to make sure that you have visibility on what you're doing. So that brings us into understanding how long it takes you to do things and working inside of your most productive hours. So this does take a bit of back work with Toggle to really know like, how well you're doing with everything that you're doing throughout your day. Um, but knowing when the best time like you have to do, you know, project work versus meetings versus um, anything else, right? You need to make sure that you're doing um, your best work in the best time that works well for you. So for me, mornings are always the best time for me to do any project work because I'm fresh, I'm ready to go. And then all of my agencies work in either the central time zone or mountain time. So I'm always up before them and meetings don't start until my afternoon. So I have a nice quiet morning of working through all of my project work, making sure that everyone has what they need. And then I get into meetings and I don't like jumping from meeting to project and then back to a meeting and then back to a project because I just find like I have to like re-immerse myself inside of it. So that's just something that I need to do for me. So just learning your most productive behaviors and your most productive hours for what you need to do. So any questions, like immediate questions on toggle. So we will send around that SOP again. So you guys can take a look at that. There's some really excellent things in there. So if you haven't taken a look at it before, definitely do. 
Katie, yes. I was just going to say too, like Jenna has it set up really nice. So um, if it's okay with you, Jenna, I will just yeah. screen share and put it in. Maybe I'll even put it right in the SOP. Yes. If you're comfortable with that. Very much so. Help yourself. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So it'll all be in there, but um, you can kind of see how Jenna does it because it's quite detailed. And although I will acknowledge it takes some time to set up up front, but then it's well worth it. Yeah, it really is. Cause I can tell you like by week, you know, what a client is giving me so much to like work to do or so much stress, because as we know, <laughs> you now 20% of your clients are going to take up 80% of your time. So you need to understand where that time is going and how you can, you know, shift that around, look at delegating, like figure out if there's a new template that needs to be done, you know, really honing in your CAM skills and creating new SOPs and templates uh, in addition to, you know, tracking your time. I have a question. I know you mentioned that you like to like chunk your meetings together. How do you manage that in terms of like scheduling? Like if you have two, three agencies and they all have meetings across different time zones and stuff like that, like how do you have any best practices for trying to like clump your times together? Maybe you covered this question. before I hopped on. No, 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 no. Great question. Okay. Um, so what I do, and Alana, you can speak to what you do, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't have any external meetings on Mondays and Fridays. Um, those are safe for internal meetings only. Um, so Mondays, we start our weeks together, like as an agency, we figure out what the priorities are for the week. Cause you know, a lot of things do shift over the weekends and the agencies that I work with, like everyone is offline on the weekends and outside of business hours. And we really make sure that we respect that time. Then we'll get to that soon. Don't you worry. Um, <laughs> but in like to juggle different agencies, like inside of Tuesday to Thursday, I don't block certain hours for different clients. So I do hop from one agency to another, like from one client meeting to another, like a different agency client meeting. Um, so I do that and that works well for me. Um, I don't have to block that out. That's not something that I need, but I do make sure that all of my calendars are synced together so that we can't schedule a meeting when I have another meeting. But um, what I try to do is make sure that there's enough time in between each of my meetings. So instead of having an hour long meeting, have a 45 minute meeting, give yourself 15 minutes to go get a coffee, stretch your legs, pee break, send off the recap from the meeting so that, you know, that's done and you can move on with a clear head for your next meeting. So um, that's usually what I do. Yeah. I think, I know this isn't applicable to every agency or every client even, um, but most of my meetings are reoccurring. So I meet with the same client Mondays at 10 or whatever. And so um, my schedule week to week looks very similar. And even if there's clients that I meet with once a month, I use the same time box, if that makes sense. So 11 a.m. on Tuesdays is this monthly client on the first Tuesday, this monthly client on the second Tuesday. Um, so like I said, my weeks look very similar because I'm meeting at the same time all of the time. One of my agencies is much more like sporadic. It's not more recurring. It's like kind of meet when we want. But what we've done is we have like set time. So we ask our clients if they're able to we always try to schedule in those jump in meetings, 1030 on Thursdays. So even if they are kind of sporadic, they're almost the same time every week. So um, it really helps with building out my structured calendar. Yeah. Um, just one thing actually that Alana, you said that sparked something um, for mm -hmm. me. So for kickoff calls, I have time blocked in everyone's calendar, like for two days every week. And those are our kickoff call meetings so that you don't have to worry about, you know, a new client that comes on, they want to start next week. You're not stressing yourself out trying to figure out, okay, well, when, when are we going to do this? Like we can't start next week because we have a full week. So mm -hmm. what I, I have blocked time on everyone's calendar and no one's allowed to book anything in there. And that's just a gift of time to everyone. They can work on whatever they want if they're not on a kickoff call, but mm -hmm. having that, that time available for those kickoff calls really makes the cam life a whole lot easier. And also really shows the client, like we're ready for you. Like we're ready to jump we're in, we're excited. And... Yeah. Ready to go. So yeah, that's an extra little thing for kickoff yeah. calls. <laughs> Hi guys. Um, I have a question or maybe just like somehow you can help me out. So the thing I'm struggling with toggle is that, you know, there are times when you're jumping between tasks, like, um, maybe you have an email communication. So you select that as your task and that takes you about like a minute, two minutes to kind of put together send off. Um, but then you are talking to your team members on Slack and it's related to different projects. So, I mean, 
I think I'm just going to spend the, like a lot of time <laughs> on toggle, like trying to like navigate, Oh, like a few seconds here and like a few seconds here. Like, I don't know. Sometimes I just like group it all together because I'm like, Oh, I, I just, I think I'm going to spend more time just adjusting toggle and it's going to take me longer than I have just to like directly answer the questions that, you know, people are asking based on different clients. Is there a solution around that or something that you would suggest? I'll jump in. Yeah, Alana, you can, you can jump in if you've got something different, but <laughs> I have that as well, Miriam. Um, a lot of times, like some of the people that I work with inside the agency, like they bulk, like ask questions in one Slack message to me. And I'm like, okay, this is for X client. This is for Y client. Um, but what I try to do as much as possible is to make sure that that's broken out by client, because I want to be able to track that. So taking that extra time to do that sometimes really helps. And once you have toggle set up, you can just start typing something in and you can like, it will auto populate it for you. You can just pick from the drop down menu. So that does save a little bit of time, but in a case where you've got a lot and you just don't have time to go into toggle and do that, like don't stress yourself out too much. If it is project management related make it project management. Um, if it's content creation, if you don't need to track by client, then it can just be content creation, right? It can be a little more simple if need be. Yeah. I was just going to say, I think you can do your best to make it perfect, but it might not always be. And if you, I don't know, maybe it works better for you if you jump around a lot to do broader categories of just like emailing meetings, project management. And then maybe if you're doing a bunch of emails for different people or whatever, it'll lump them differently. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Bonnie. Hi. I, so I have a similar issue and I do have like, I have a dump task, I guess it's a good way to put it where it's just like, Hey, I'm like running through Slack or I'm running through just like random like get in the lay of the land type stuff where it's like not taking that half an hour to really break out a client email. It's just like a quick answer here and there. And my agency owner is happy with that, although he doesn't micromanage my time. But one thing that we're starting to explore with ClickUp, and in fact, I'm thinking of, I use EverHour and Asana, but this agency, we've migrated them to ClickUp and ClickUp has time tracking baked in. And so I'm actually looking at potentially hopping over to time tracking in ClickUp, partly because the way that it tracks the time is like essentially when the task window is open. So it kind of is a bit more automatic in terms of like linking the work that we're doing production wise with what I'm working on. So where that wouldn't apply, I suppose, is like Slack messaging and email, but we are in an agency system where we're trying to keep as much in ClickUp as possible. So I am exploring that and I'm just wondering if anyone else is using other time tracking other than Toggle as well and what their feedback has been. So I mostly use Toggle, but sometimes I use Teamwork. So a few clients are on an hourly uh, contract. So I need to track my hours there as well and that we put it into Teamwork. So I also make sure that it's in Toggle for my own records just to make sure that I have a clear record of what I was doing for that client at that time as well. But for the agency itself, having it in teamwork is what works best for certain clients. So for me, it's not great in teamwork. It sounds like ClickUp is amazing for that. And I know like with you and your agency, like you guys are really killing it in ClickUp, which is <laughs> so inspiring. So if that's where it makes sense for you, like 100%, like, you know, make it make sense, right? But yes, Harvest seems popular. Yeah. I think it has a native integration with Asana. I know that Ever Hour does work with ClickUp as well. Um, Harvest does as well, yeah. Yeah, my Ever Hour is like for my own tracking. Um, so our agency doesn't track time at all, which is wild to me. And one of the things that we have had issues with is just since the day that I onboarded with them is like wrangling scope. And I've really been like encouraging them to track time for the client stuff. Cause I think it would really improve the processes that the agency has, but without us operating in ClickUp and having tasks to track too, that was sort of a barrier. So I think like, as our team fully sinks that there'd be a lot of benefits there, but does anyone else work with an agency that doesn't like do any time tracking? I do. Um, one of them 
it's like a very, very small agency. It's basically just me and the agency owner. And he is very much, his number one thing is customer service. He'll bend over backwards for any client. Anything that asks, he'll say yes. He just basically, I think, I don't do the billing for him. He does it himself. Um, but I think he just charges a monthly management fee. And from his point of view, it's just whatever you have to do to keep clients happy, you do, which I'm not saying I agree with, but that's the way he likes to do it. So I'm personally tracking my own time on Toggle, but he's not very concerned about it. So if that works for him, that works for him. But I do suggest to him that we need to start like tightening the reins a little bit because the boundaries are not there with that agency so much. So awesome. Yeah. Great. All right. Um, so this one will be a quick slide, but obviously with time management comes organization. And as .cams, we already all know about this and we all have our own ways to stay organized. So just a couple of my tips that I think apply to time management um, and having multiple agencies and jumping between them. Um, one of my biggest things is I have a different Chrome browser for every agency. And this also really helps with Toggle because when I open up a new browser, it's just right at the top there for me um, in the Chrome browser to change over my time tracking. Um, this is also really helpful with saving passwords and it really makes me aware of how I'm using my time. Like they're all color coded, they're different colors. So I know how much time I'm spending in each browser. And two, it's helpful with Toggle because then if I miss recording my time, I can go back to my Google Chrome history and it's really obvious. I was in this browser from 9.30 to 10.30 and stuff like that. So it's really helpful when you're working with different agencies um, to stay organized kind of that way. Another one that I feel like kind of goes without saying is managing your calendar. Um, we all know these tools and these tricks like Calendly. I'm a big fan of Google calendars. One of my agencies uses Outlook or Office or whatever, um, which I'm not a fan of, but just learning to integrate those. Um, I use once hub as well which pulls all of them together and gives you a lovely little booking link and another tip that i have is i always block off a spot when i offer it to someone so if i email a client i'm like hey does 11 a.m on tuesday work right away i block that off um, i don't invite them yet but i know now that i've offered that time to someone and i can't book anything else in there and then a final one is personal project management software so what i use this for is i have lists um, and calendars with the due dates only for like the bigger items. It's not for day-to-day -day things and it's not for the things that live within um, like my other agencies, Asanas or ClickUp. It's just for my task. If I know that I went from one meeting to another, but I need to send that meeting recap, I put that into my personal ClickUp. And then I just have like a very nice tidy little, I need to do this today is almost how it ends up working out um, because I just quickly add things there. So those would be my tips. Any questions about organization with time management? Or Jenna, do you have anything to add? <laughs> no, the, everything that, that you said is what I do as well. So like with different Chrome browsers, I have all of mine color coordinated as well, which also <laughs> tells you how much time you're spending, like not even tracking like the time inside like, in the browser, like how long you were there. Yeah, of course I do. Yeah. It's crazy because you'll see there's like a million tabs open in one and then like two open in another. It's like, okay, well, I'm pretty heavy on this one agency today. So that's mm -hmm. where I need to spend all of my time right now and um, just kind of adjust as you go, right? And that's the thing, like having flexibility is so important too. Taking a quick pause on today's episode to talk to you about the beginning of a referral worthy client experience. I wanna introduce you to our complete onboarding package for digital marketing agencies. So this isn't your first rodeo. You know the client experience can make or break a project. Forget the blood, sweat, and tears that you and your team have poured into a project. If the client doesn't feel as important as their project, you won't land those referrals your business is banking on. But who has the time to baby their clients and promise them the results? The good news is onboarding your clients is the beginning of that referral-worthy client experience and your secret to repeat clients. And in the complete onboarding package, we're showing you how to onboard your clients like professional client account managers. That's us. So what is the complete onboarding package? It is everything you need to know about onboarding. As dedicated client account managers for some of the world's most successful digital marketing agencies, we've onboarded more clients than we could count. We've tried and tested and retested our process to get it perfect. And that is now this complete onboarding package. From the sales call to the launch, the complete onboarding package shows you how we onboarded clients into digital marketing agencies step by step. 
including the exact tools and templates we use with real clients. You'll get a 24 step-by-step -step guide, 22 in-depth video tutorials, and more than 18 tools and templates. So you can take action right away, swipe, and implement right into your agency. So if you are an agency, make sure you head over to clientaccountmanager.com slash onboarding to get your hands on the complete onboarding package. I suggest a little hack as well. So sometimes you can have a scheduling link and like you get booked back to back to back and then kind of your follow-ups and your like after notes get a little bit pushed back. Um, so there is something in Calendly that won't let you book like 15, 30 or like something after each meeting. So that's like a real thing. You can also set up something like you can only book however many you want in a day. So maybe it's four or five or whatever your sort of bandwidth is. And you know how you like consolidate all into one Google calendar. So sometimes I'll make the meeting for the agency, you know, if it's an hour, I'll just kind of book off the next sort of 15 or 20 minutes mm -hmm. inside of the consolidated calendar to like make sure I get it all. Um, you know, just my notes clear, at least a plan, like Alana, you said, maybe back and click up or something like to make sure that I follow up correctly. Mm -hmm. And I think too, with Calendly, you can also set it so that they can only book so far in advance. So yeah. it's not like someone can log on and book me for 10 AM, like in 30 minutes. I think I yeah. have it set for three or four hours. It'll always give me a time to prepare. So that's really important too, I think. Okay. Awesome. All right. So this is something I feel so passionately about, and I have learned this the hard way. So you can learn it the hard way, or you can do it this way, <laughs> whatever works for you. So boundaries with agency owners. So we're all wonderful, sparkling humans, and we are the kindest type of person, which is a client account manager. Uh, and we want to help out, right? That's why we're here. We want to help people. We want them to realize their marketing goals and dreams, right? So we give as much as we can to help them with that. But sometimes to our own detriment, really important to kind of set the stage with your agency to make sure that you know your time is valued as well and that you're valuing it and so are they. So making sure that you understand the best way um, to get a hold of your team members and communicate with them and also communicating the best way to get a hold of you. So for me, on a regular day, just in my personal life, I am not close to my phone. Like I miss messages from my family, from my friends, because I just don't like having my phone around me. So I tell uh, my agency owners and my agency POCs that I'm like messaging me, like texting me or calling me on my phone. You're not going to get the best response from me, especially during work hours, because I am heavy into, you know, my laptop or my desktop, just working. So that's the best place to get a hold of me and understanding with your agencies as well. Like where are your agency, like employees, like where are they working? So for me, uh, with one of my agencies, they're constantly in Slack. Like that's where they do all their communication. We're trying to push them into a project management tool so that we can have more communication there, but everyone likes to stay in Slack. So in order to, you know, kind of help them like move into the project management tool a little more, you set everything up in the project management tool, go into Slack, be like, hey, I put this task for you in teamwork. Can you please take a look at it? You know, this is a timeline. This is all the information, but communicating to them in a place where I know they're going to be and they're going to see it. And then of course, following up. So setting the stage with communication, knowing where to find everyone that really helps with boundaries as well. So then in terms of Slack, if you know, you're going to have a busy day, like you're organized, you have your calendar already organized and ready to go. You know, you're going to have a busy day, update that in Slack. And I think we all do this anyway, because Slack makes it fun with the little emojis that you can put there. So, you know, really encouraging to be able to go there and just say, Hey, I have a full day of meetings. I'll be checking in, you know, in two hours, like at X time, and I'll be sending updates then. And that helps everyone on the agency side, just kind of take a breath of fresh air and just be like, all right, that's fine. You know, Jenna's going to be back in two hours. And then we can kind of pick this up from where we left off. Um, because sometimes agencies know that we, like, we're fractional and sometimes they don't, right? So sometimes they think we're a full-time employee. So they expect us to be, you know, having that constant communication. So setting those boundaries with everyone on the team, not just the agency owner and your agency POC, just with everyone in general, uh, is going to make things a lot easier. So over communicating that just like we do with our holidays and vacation time, just letting them know like in advance, like I'm going to be busy this day. So if you need something, please let me know before so that I can prioritize that. So yeah, and then planning ahead with prioritizing, um, don't say yes to a project if you know that 
you know, you're going to be going over your hours this week, or if you're getting close to going over your hours, you want to make sure that you have some time for those urgent things that happen every Friday that <laughs> every week seems to have. So yeah, make sure if you aren't going to be able to do it this week and you know you're not, don't say yes. Just say, you know what, I can do that next week. I'll make sure that's a priority. Or if it is something that needs to be done this week, find out what can I move? You know, chat with your agency POC. There's nothing wrong with saying, listen, these are my hours. Like this is how much time I've been spending. And if you need this done, then something else is going to have to move uh, to make priority for that. So in saying that, chatting with your agency POC um, about your time is really important too. So if you're getting close to going over your hours, so for example, if you have an agency that is in phase two, so 15 hours per week, once you get to 10 hours, let them know and like update them in Slack or email, whatever, wherever they communicate best and tell them and have a record of, Hey, listen, like these are my hours. This is where I'm at. These are my priorities for the rest of the week. Is there anything else that you can think of that's coming up? or anything that we should move to make room for something else coming down the pipeline, things like that. So this is where toggle really comes uh, into play really well. So like knowing how much time you're spending every day, every week, so that you can communicate that to your agency POC and make sure that they're aware and that they can track it on their side as well and see, oh, well, this client is taking up too much of Jenna's time we need to reevaluate like what we're doing, like with her client list or like what is actually going on with this client themselves? Why are they asking for so much? Why are we, you know, so delayed with X, Y, Z or whatever the case may be. So communicating that with the, your agency POC is going to be, you know, your best line of defense. So you don't volunteer your time. Any questions on that agency boundaries? It's hard. It's really hard to do. So if <laughs> anyone needs like a Slack <laughs> update template, let me know. I have one. It's definitely super hard to do because I feel like we are yes people. Like you said, Jenna, I think this kind of piggybacks on what I was going to mention at the end of this, but I wanted to see if it would be worth like confidence sort of dot discovers and not confidence, like, you know, in your own sort of person, but like just in the agency being that person. I think these, this is a great sort of pivot point to that as well, Jenna. So I think it's hard to do, but it is, it's really hard to do. And I, you know, Katie and I had so many conversations about like, I know I shouldn't volunteer my time, but I care about these people so much. Like, I want to help out like as much as I can. And they're working extra hours for this one launch that's happening. And I want to, you know, be there with the troops, like and doing like, what I can. Job. And it's like in our nature to just like deliver so much. So right, um, yeah, I think this is an ongoing discussion for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Bonnie, excellent point. Yeah. Being honest with them. Yeah. If, if you're honest, it's going to go mm -hmm. a long way and really like they are your best defense, um, mm -hmm. with volunteering your time. And we vet these agencies, like they're good people. <laughs> so <laughs> they'll be receptive to you being like, listen, I'm getting close to my hours and that's okay. Well, it's not okay to be going over your hours, but it's okay to tell them that you're getting close to going over your hours. And that goes to the confidence thing that Katie was talking about. Just that really kind of goes even further back to toggle and knowing how long it takes you to do things so that you can say with confidence, yeah, I'm not going to be able to do this this week because like, this is what else I have, unless there's a different priority, then let me know. So we can kind of shift things around, but being very open with your communication. So also piggyback. So here's the balance too, because I don't necessarily think it's a good vibe if you're like, well, I'm over hours this week. You know what I mean? Like sort of that pushback is like kind of icky sometimes. So like mm -hmm. finding that sort of sweet spot that Jenna, Lana, you know, everybody on the team can help you with if you're struggling, but being honest in like the dot way, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Friendly, you know, yeah. solution based, like yeah, I'm, I'm going to be over hours, but this is what we can do so that all they have to do is say, yes, do that instead of having to figure out a way to do it. Cause you know, your hours, you know, what you're able to do because you're tracking your time and you know how long it takes you to do everything. So you can say with confidence that this is where I'm at currently. And by the end of the week, I will be at my hours, but I just want you to know. So just in case something does come up, then we can prioritize together like that kind of thing. So I think we're set. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the next thing for boundaries is boundaries with clients. And so I think it's a little bit easier to set boundaries with clients than it is with agencies. Um, just because, you know, with the clients, you have your agency to back you up. But like Jenna said, our agency people are good people too. So that shouldn't be very scary. 
Um, but there's a few tips that I have. Um, and I really learned these with my second agency because they had no boundaries when I came in. It was very all over the place and just say yes to everything. So these are my best tips for setting boundaries with clients. Um, the first one would be setting expectations with consistency. So always keeping meetings hard stop, being consistent in the communication channel is really important to me because if you tell them, oh, I respond to emails, just you need to do that. So I have one client that wants to message me on Facebook Messenger. And I've learned with him that it is the best way to get in contact with him. So I say yes to him and we keep that consistent, but I'm consistent with everybody else to say, no, you need to reach me by email. Um, so it is definitely like a case by case basis, but I think being consistent is so important with expectations. Um, and this also really helps with referrals. So we have one client who refers a lot of business to us because his, the nature of his business is helping start other businesses. So when he starts them, then he refers to our marketing team, but he has almost no boundaries. So it's really hard when he uh, refers a new client um, and they come on with his expectations thinking, well, oh, Ryan says you guys work on weekends. Ryan says you do this. And it's like, no, no. We don't do that. Like, so really reeling it in with Ryan will help us as we get referrals. Um, another thing that's really important is just accurately uh, managing your response time and your hours. So I have a personal rule. I will never respond to a client on weekends because it did happen to me once where I did. And then she asked to schedule a meeting on a weekend. And I said, no, I don't work weekends. And she said, but you replied to me once on a weekend. So she caught me and I was like, okay, I'm never doing that again. So if I'm working outside of my normal hours, I will always, always schedule sent on Gmail or whatever emailing service you're using so that it goes when it looks like I'm working in normal hours. And I also just as a mental note for clients, I tell them it's likely sooner, but I will always respond to you within 24 hours. Um, just in case I ever do have to jump to a different agency and put out fires. But that being said, I do always send a little email being like, hey, thanks, I got this request. Um, I'm going to look into this with the team. I will be in touch once we get this sorted, just so that they know that I've seen it too. And I forgot to include this on the slide, but setting up an, not an out of office auto response, but hey, I'm very busy today. Um, if your email is urgent, please include urgent in the subject line and I will make sure I take a look at it. Another thing, if they ask for hours outside of your normal hours for meetings, it's okay to say that's outside of my hours. I had this issue with one agency. A lot of the clients are construction businesses. So these clients are busy day to day in on job sites doing things during what's normally my working hours. So they want to meet in the evenings or on the weekends. And the way we've managed that is we really trim down the frequency of meetings. We do lots of virtual or email check-ins. We send lots of Loom. And if there's something that we really need to meet about, we tell them it's fine if you're on the job site and it's noisy, like just step into your truck. Like you don't need to be at your computer. We'll make sure that we'll, we get this chat um, on the calendar. Another important thing I think is pivoting boundaries because it's hard if you haven't been strong on them and then you decide to be. Um, it's really hard to kind of change and pivot that way. Or if you join a new agency and you come in and there is no boundaries. And I think sometimes I look a little bit of like a bad guy because they've been happy with being at the beck and call all the time. Um, and then I come on and I'm like, no, we can't do that. So it's really hard. And I think this is an area that I would even appreciate any tips from you guys is pivoting when you need to make a change in regards to boundaries. And the final thing is just respect. Well, when people aren't being respectful of your time, how to deal with that. So if people, if I'm sitting in a Zoom meeting and they're not coming, five to seven minutes is usually I send a reminder. And then 10 to 15, I send another email being like, hey, looks like we missed you. Let me know if you'd like to reschedule or do a virtual check-in. And the last one that I included here is canceling last minute. I don't mind that at all because if people cancel, there's no worries at all. And then I have time blocked off to do some other work. So I let people know all the time, like if you can't make it, it's totally fine. Just let me know and we'll manage. Hey, there you go. So um, this one might be more for you, Alana. How did you set like expectations slash boundaries when you had a big time zone change? Ah, uh, yeah. So this is a little bit tricky because when I first started, I was living in Paris working with agencies in mountain time and eastern time it was nice at least 
with that exact time change because I started my days at about 1 or 2 p.m. and I worked until about 9 p.m. So they just knew that I was pretty much available in their morning and all of the behind the scenes work was happening while they were asleep. So it was a little bit hard because it was only so many hours in the day where I could fit in meetings. So it did end up being me taking a couple meetings at midnight, but okay. <laughs> um, I slowly got away from that. At first I felt like I had to say yes, because I knew my time schedule was the problem in the situation. Yeah. So I felt bad and needed to correct it. It's hard. It's so hard. <laughs> what did you do to like change that as you progressed? Yeah. So I think when I first started with the agency, what I did was that I made it clear that I was willing to bend and be flexible. But as I got more integrated, I was like, okay, these meetings are actually really late for me. Do you guys mind if we now change them? Once I kind of, I guess, like built a good connection with the client and the agency. So I definitely feel like the first few weeks were a little bit chaotic because there was midnight meetings, but slowly I just got a little stricter and said, Hey, that's outside of my working hours. I won't be able to meet at this time. And it's hard to not feel bad when you say that, but you don't need to feel bad because it is work. Right. And they know where you're based and they should see it as like a working partnership. Right. So it has to work for everyone. And you would also like always offer something else or like, does this time right. work better or something? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah of course. But as your schedules change, like it's fine to tell a client, Hey, like, is it all right if we move this meeting? Here's some available times. Like, you know, sometimes clients, that's the time that works for them and they need it at that time. And that's fine. If we can make it work, we can make it work. But if we can move something to make it easier, like for you or for the team, I mean, there's no harm in asking to move something like to a different mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. So in the interest of time management, yeah, let's jump over to tools, tricks, and tips. So this is just a little bit of a wrap up, but my biggest tips would be managing expectations with consistency, balance of flexibility and structure. I think taking breaks throughout your day is really important because otherwise I could sit at the computer for an hour and actually not get anything done. But in my head, I'm like, I need to be sitting here doing work. So just get up, make lunch, take a little break. Um, and schedule send is my best friend because I think that's so helpful with boundaries. So, yeah. Perfect. And um, for me, because I love working in my most productive hours, um, I feel more accomplished that way. I do the right work in the right time. Uh, so project work for me in the morning is always best. I'm at my best when the coffee first hits. So after <laughs> it starts to peter out, if I don't have another pot of coffee, then I mean, we're just going to have to sit on meetings and, you know, listen and respond and do all that. Cause that's, you know, the better time for me to do that. Um, so under promise over deliver, but in the kindest way. So kind of to my point earlier of, you know, if you can't get something done this week and it's not a priority, tell them next week by like the end of the week or whatever the case may be. And same with clients too, not just agencies. If you ask the team, like, how long is this going to take you to do if it's a new request? And they say, oh, like I could probably have it done by the end of this week then say mid next week. Right. And then you can send it to the client, you know, this week. And then they're like, wow, that was really fast. Like we appreciate that, but always remembering to stay true to those expectations as well. So if you do say mid next week, maybe don't send it this week, send it early next week. If it's done this week, unless it's something urgent and then Slack reminder. So this is my favorite thing. And kind of going back to, I think one of my earlier points of communicating with your team where they are. So we're in project management tools a lot as client account managers, but if your team is in Slack, setting those Slack reminders to remind yourself to follow up with on something with someone um, later in the day, if they're like, okay, well, I'm going to work on it now. Can we chat about it later? Like today, your day is going to fill up quickly with maybe a flyer, maybe two, maybe an additional meeting, who knows? And you might forget, like I was supposed to follow up with you and I forgot about it. Can you give me a quick run down now. No one likes to feel that, right? So setting a remind me later uh, notification on Slack is great because you can set it to the exact time that you want the reminder. So if it's in 20 minutes, an hour, you know, tomorrow at 7 a.m., like whatever works best for you and when you need to do that, Slack will remind you and send it into a nice clean little folder there where you can just see all of your reminders uh, in one spot. So I usually do that if I'm ending my day things that I know I need to follow up 
on in the morning. I'll set a Slack reminder for like 8 a.m. Um, for all of the things. And then at 8 a.m., I have my list of follow ups to do. And it gives you the link right to the message, which is really great. Uh, so you can just click on the, the link to the message. And then, yes, uh, Teresa, same for snoozing emails, follow up. Yeah, that's a really great uh, tip as well. So, yeah, same thing, just snoozing your email until the day that you know you need to follow up. Um, if you do use Google for like Gmail, then it will like give you a reminder a couple days after to follow up anyway. But I always like to follow up at least two days after I send something. One day, you know, like the day of, like sometimes people don't get to see it. And then the next day, it's like, it takes some time for people to look into a lot of things. So giving them some space as well is important. So we only have five minutes, but <laughs> if anyone has any tips, tools, and tricks for time management, we'd love to hear about it. So maybe instead of discussing it on this call, uh, why don't we chat about it in Slack? I'll start a Slack thread and everyone can just add in their favorite time management tools and tricks and tips and everything so that we can all learn from each other. Because if you guys are doing something that I never knew about, I'd love to hear about it because I don't know everything about time management. <laughs> Very little. This is what I know. Now you guys know it. So share it, but you guys know, and uh, we can all learn from each other and have more time back for ourselves. So with Doc Discovers, this is a very high value piece that we give all of our client account managers, but we can also help out your client account management team with our training over here at Dot & Company. So definitely reach out if that's something that interests you so you can really ace your time management as well as all of your client account management skills. Thanks for listening. Cheers to happy clients.